brain surgery, and football. Unrelated? Think again. Football coaches ingrain focus and discipline in their players. A surgeon uses similar skills operating on a patient. Just as football teams perform various plays, physicians must exhibit extraordinary abilities to make split-second decisions and meet ever-changing conditions. So who better to instruct some of the most elite football coaches than a highly qualified neurosurgeon? The goal of the Precision Workshop was to not only paint a picture for the West Point coaches and players, but to actually immerse them in what it's like to be a neurosurgeon. I wanted them to see what my concept is for precision, execution, and concentration. I know and I love neurosurgery. It's very cool. You'll see that today. It's also very, very stressful. Exhilarating, frustrating, sometimes interferes with my life, sometimes heartbreaking. And yes, of course, very, very rewarding. And I think you could use those same words about coaching football. Even though it seems that we work in worlds apart, maybe not so much. You're going to experience neurosurgery. Nothing you learn in life is superfluous. Everything has a lesson that you need to find and apply to what you do. You'll want to pay attention to every word I say because they're all critical for the success of your patients. My job in the next hour is to teach you to concentrate, execute, and be precise under stress. Just as your job is to teach your players to concentrate, execute, and be precise under stress. When we visited uh, Center State and met with Dr. McLaughlin, I was uh, really impressed with his understanding of how to blend his world into our world and, and taking a look at Army football and the, uh, the links between being precise all the time, uh, being relentless and pursuing uh, excellence as a matter of habit, and he just did a fantastic job of connecting that for the coaches. The reason we brought the West Point coaches to the operating room was to create stress. I wanted them to perform high-level, complex tasks in life and death situations. They've been coaches for years. Today, I wanted them to be players. We're doing a right retromastoid craniectomy and microvascular decompression of the trigeminal nerve. Do we identify the patient? Yes. Anesthesia ready? ready. Instruments ready? ready? Let's get started. Good, good, good. Now push down on the cerebellum a little bit using the tip and you see, look, oh, there's a blood vessel. There you go, above the, above the loop and then push it down. There you go, right there. Your forceps tip is too far, it's pushing in the brainstem. Back up a little bit. Okay, there you go, that's where you want to be, right angle nerve hook. There you go. Now just use your forceps to push it on the nerve a little bit. Yep. Stop, you're done. Good job. The preparation that Dr. McLaughlin had set us up for, when you got in the moment, you actually believed that you were doing brain surgery. I mean, it was so lifelike. We totally were focusing on that entity at that moment. As soon as they put those instruments in our hand, and as soon as we tried to use the scope, we recognized that we, were, we became conscious of our incompetence. And we need to remember what that feels like. We need to be patient with that part of it, and we need to have a plan to address it. And we've always done that, but again, that was a bucket of cold water to know what that feels like. Because it's one thing to know it exists, it's another thing to experience it. And that was, that was uh, really compelling to me at the, at the outset. People entrust their lives to us. We experience superhuman stress, profound moments, moments many people have a handful only in their lifetime. Don't be seduced by it. You not only have to manage your own mind's thinking and eliminate distractions, but as coaches and officers, you have to manage the minds of the team and the platoon.
this is my line of scrimmage. Okay? Bad things can happen after this, but I have put myself in a position for success. I have stacked the deck in my favor so that I can see everything, I can move everything, and I can do exactly what I need to do. Today, you got a window into a different world. I knew that he was going to educate the Army coaching staff in a way that they had never been educated before. He was going to expose them to concepts or understandings of precision and attention and execution and responsibility to oneself and one's team. Those guys have all heard those terms before, but they had never experienced it quite the same way. So it was a very broadening experience for all of them. Coach Ellerson and the West Point football coaching staff got so much value out of the precision workshop at Center State that they invited me to come up and speak to the football team. They wanted me to convey to the players my idea of precision and how it applied to not only the football playing field, but also their military career and their life. Gentlemen, Coach Ellerson wants something. We've been talking for weeks about it. He wants you guys to be great. He knows you are capable of greatness, and he'll do anything to bring that out of you. He asked me to give you my interpretation of precision. I have always been fascinated with performance, how little it takes to go off or go on course. I've seen it happen to athletes, lawyers, fellow doctors. Don't be casual. Nothing is casual about playing in a football stadium or performing in an operating room or on patrol. A player on the practice field or in the stadium with a casual attitude will produce a team casualty on Saturday. When you walk out of this room today, understand better what it takes to win and why you must take responsibility to create a great team. I think when Dr. McLaughlin is talking to us today, one of the greatest points that I took was how important it is to really think about why you're doing what you're doing and to prepare yourself uh, so thoroughly and again to work on the trust piece of that. So uh, one of his quotes uh, talked about the word casual and how casual has the same roots as the word casualty. And you think about that, whether it's in the classroom or on an athletic field, the idea that nothing can be casual because the, the results of being casual can be catastrophic. I've challenged them to go ahead and draw the parallels from what they just heard, from try, as they've tried to project themselves into Dr. McLaughlin's world, and draw the parallels into theirs. If you want to excel at anything, there's going to be commonality. And obviously we focused on precision, but I think what Dr. McLaughlin did today is he rose the bar on what precision can look like. I loved creating the Precision Workshop, and I hope the West Point coaches and players learned as much as I did. I hope that they learned that concentration, execution, and precision are lifelong pursuits, and they're universally applicable. They not only make me a better surgeon, but they make me a better father, a better husband, a better coach, a better person.